Guardians, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another Sly Nation a Destiny 2 video. So the raid was beat fairly early and on the same day the GoFan and Forge dropped as well. So in this video I'm going to show you guys how to get the second black armory key from the GoFan and Forge for the mysterious exotic box and the differences between the two forges as well as how to beat the new boss. So first off you have to complete the black armory quest line which allows you into the forge and that starts by getting a drop from a fallen enemy. It then takes you on a quest to find out where the stolen goods are coming from and it ends up on Nessus with the opening of the new forge. Now believe it or not this forge is actually easier than the one in the EDZ, the Belunder Forge. Much easier actually. At least that is until the boss shows up. Now if you've completed the lead-in quest and you fought the Servitor, then you know exactly what he does. It's his move called Servitor's Grasp, similar to the, um, the public event boss, where it teleports you randomly. Well the Forge boss does this exact same move. So to begin with, it's best to have two up front and one in the very back where you enter the Forge. Or if you want, you guys can just run around the outside of the pit. Do not stay in the middle, the area I call the pit, except for brief times to get bouncing batteries because you will get destroyed from all sides if you stay in the middle for too long. As most tacticians know, you always want to fight from the high ground. Now once again, I found that the same loadout you used for the Volunder Forge works well here, except that Cold Heart might actually be better for the boss, but it will slow you down during the first two phases. As for team composition, two warlocks with Well of Radiance and one hammer, or go two hunters with a blade barrage and a warlock with a well. The warlock well is what's going to give you the extra damage and protection you need to get that damage out so you can make the most of your initial damage phase. Next let's talk about how to get your next black armory key for the mysterious exotic box that you got from the Volunder Forge. So it's pretty much the same thing here guys. During the second level you want to look towards the left hand side of the map from where you entered the forge. You're going to see one of those little robot things floating above a rock, kind of like ground level. And the second will be at the very front of the forge, up high, circling a metal beam. I recommend that you get the higher one first and then get the one on the rock because the rock is always visible while the other one does a circle and it hides half the time. So you want to try to get that first and then get the rock second so you can get in and out and start focusing on bad guys. Once again, you only need two to get the maximum temper buff. I also found out the hard way that you don't actually have to complete the forge as in beating the boss to get the second key. Even if you fail, grab the chest that spawns in and the key will be inside. So no matter what, you can cross that off your list even if you don't actually beat it. Now as for the boss, here's where things get a little more difficult. Number one, he will randomly teleport one player at a time. And on top of that, the boss teleports himself. So when you reappear sometimes, you have to look around for like five seconds so you can reorient yourself to where everything is and where the boss is located. At this time, another player is going to be teleporting. So now you have to hope that your last teammate is still shooting the boss and the shield doesn't go back up and hopefully you'll find the boss and start shooting him again before the next guy gets teleported. That's how things become a bit harder because players are getting teleported all the time and during then you are losing a lot of total damage over the course of the entire fight due to this teleporting mechanic. So you have to make the most of your initial damage phase before he starts teleporting you. That's how this boss fight becomes harder than the Volunder Forge. Now my suggestion is that when it comes time for damage, head to the front left of the arena. There's going to be a little cove back there. What you want to do is take down the shield bots and then immediately place a Well of Radiance and all three of you go to town with Spindle or Whisper of the Worm. Very soon after you get about a quarter or a third of the boss's health down, one of you will get Servitor's Grasp and be teleported. Try to make it back to make the most of what's left of your Well of Radiance. Do not shoot the boss from behind or from the side as it will turn towards you, making it so that the other two teammates left lose sight of the boss's weak spot. That then messes up their shots, making them spin bullets that you desperately need. So try to make it back into the well while you can and use your Whisper to the best of your ability. Even if your well disappears, drop a healing rift or perhaps, you know, a titan wall and then just keep going until you are out of heavy. Hopefully by this time you'll have at least two thirds to three quarters of the boss's health depleted. From here on out guys, it's going to be a free for all. Supers, grenades, anything and everything you have left. Here is where Cold Heart can make or break the fight. EP shotguns, don't get me wrong, I love them, they work great. But when you use it against the giant servitor, you usually die if you get too close because he does that freak out maneuver which kills you pretty quickly. 
unless you have a second warlock to pop a, a well of radiance underneath the boss shotgunning is going to be suicide run after suicide run however cold heart especially if it's masterwork can be quite effective as will a secondary sniper rifle once again it can be done with a shotgun especially if you were effective with your whisper shots However, each time that you die, that leaves one less person alive to make sure the boss's shield does not regen while someone else is being teleported. If the boss's shield comes back, that usually means you guys aren't going to finish. The fight is only a bit difficult because of the teleporting. If it weren't for this, then it would be way, way easier than the Volunder Forge. And the first two levels actually are easier than Volunder. At least I believe so. So just stay out of the middle pit and try to take out the shanks as fast as possible. Spawn killing them at the door, also pretty effective. But that is really about it guys. Once you beat it, the new sniper rifle is yours as is a new emblem and triumph. I'm currently finishing up my raid guides as we speak, so keep an eye out for that here soon, but I am out guys. As always, thank you for watching and for supporting the channel. The Anthem Closed Alpha is going on right now and I cannot wait to dive in tomorrow morning once again. So lots to do between then and now, take care y'all, and if you're new to the channel, then welcome my friend, thank you for watching, and subscribe for lots more Destiny 2 and Anthem content. Spank the thumbs up if you enjoyed yourself, comment down below if you have any questions, or if you just want to say what's up. Keep those eyes open for more vids coming out soon, but until then, this is your dude Sly, and I'll catch you guys next time.